So you're in need of a new dive watch, but you just spent most of your savings on your open water paddy certification, a brand new wetsuit, and maybe even your own tank, a BCD, regulator, and mask. Breathe easy, pun intended, because we've assembled a handy guide of what we consider to be some of the top dive watches with a current MSRP under $500. We'll go ahead and explain some things to look for as we work through our top picks, so let's get right into it with our first dive watch from Casio. Leave it to Casio to offer up one of the most capable sub $100 divers in existence. The Casio Duro Marlin is a cult classic that continues to gain fans since its release circa 2011. Great quality control and attention to detail are the Duro's calling cards. For around $70, you're provided 200 meters of water resistance perfect alignment of the timing bezel and an overall stainless steel construction and classy dial presentation that feels as though you're paying at least double or triple the MSRP. There is absolutely nothing that comes close to the value you get with the Duro under $100. You could make an argument for G-Shock, but that aesthetic is wholly their own and it looks nothing like a classic diver of old. 44.2 on the wrist, a millimeter and a half shy of 50 millimeters lug to lug and 12.1 millimeters thick. Certainly not the most compact diver we've seen, even if it has vintage sub-like cues, but the wearing experience is overall really pleasant, especially on our wrist just shy of 8 inches. We spoke about quality control and attention to detail, and here's what we meant. We get hands-on with a ton of watches, and take it from us, most budget dive bezels are a swing and a miss. Problems with the rotation, slippage, misalignment. The Duro has none of those, and feels like something you'd easily pay a few hundred dollars for at the very least. The case finishing is largely all highly polished except for a touch of fine brushing on the top of the lugs. A screw down crown at the 3 protected by a pair of crown guards does a very nice job without any discernible problems with its operation, and the bezel sports thick grip points to easily control timing with ample grip, even with a pair of gloves if need be. The jet black dial is sparse, but it's set with loom indices and a sword shade pan set that glow a rich shade of aqua blue in the dark. Above the 6 is the Duro's Marlin logo that adds a bit of playful charm to an otherwise sophisticated presentation. So kind of a tangent, but oddly enough, laid-back Microsoft billionaire Bill Gates is actually a huge fan of the Duro. Safe to say he's not well known for his diving acumen, but his choice here does speak volumes. He's taking meetings with some of the most powerful businesses around the world with the Duro strapped to his wrist. And honestly, the Duro's highbrow aesthetic lends itself to doing so. You could totally keep this on in any white collar environment and not feel like it's misplaced in the least. Alright, perhaps we'd opt for the stainless steel bracelet in that situation, but you get the point. Securing the Duro to our wrist is a standard 22mm rubber dive strap, but would also look killer in a Tropic variant, a NATO of some form or fashion, or even the right leather strap. On paper, the Orient Kamisu Diver has a lot going for it, considering the price point just north of $250. Sapphire, screw down crown, an in-house movement, a 120 click timing bezel, a dependable 40 hour reserve, and 200 meters of water resistance. So we were extremely excited to get hands on to see just how well it performed. Frankly, we were blown away by just how well built the Kamisu really is. The full stainless steel 40 millimeter case is well finished, it's classically shaped, nicely proportioned with a moderate 47 millimeter lug to lug, and a highly wearable 12.8 millimeter thickness, taking into consideration the timing bezel. So before we dive any deeper, yes, pun intended again, let's briefly discuss water resistance. Long story short, when you're considering a dedicated dive watch that's capable of actual diving, you're going to want at least 200 meters of water resistance. Now, some folks just like the aesthetic of a diver, but may be landlocked in the Midwest somewhere, and hey, more power to you. So not much of a concern, but if you do actually find yourself below depth on the occasion, make sure you pick the right diving companion. Anyway, Orient used the Barracuda, a fish that hangs out in the warm waters closest to the equator, known for its ferocity and razor-sharp teeth, to design the Kamisu. Sharp is the name of the game here. Under the sapphire, the arrow and sword-shaped handset is razor-sharp, as are the framed indices all inset with plenty of loom that glows a shade of seaweed green, and the highly polished frame of the day date at the three. Plus, the Barracuda's small scales are highly reflective and almost give the slender predator a metal-like finish. All the frame dial elements on the Kamisu clearly look the part. We just spoke about bezel alignment when discussing the Casio Duro, and the Kamisu impresses here again, with spot on accuracy as it ticks counterclockwise around the dial, and does so with 120 clicks, a rarity among budget divers of this price tier. 
The bezel, as well as the dial, if you look closely, sports a fine textured matte finish that adds to the overall complexity of the watch's visual presentation, and it makes it feel all the more premium. You may not know that Ornient actually manufactures a lot of their movements in-house, and the Kamasu builds in one of their own, the automatic F6922, with hand winding and hacking seconds. The movement provides decent accuracy and about 40 hours of power. Now, not that the bracelet is bad in any way in particular, it isn't, just to be clear. But what is clear is that this is where its price point does start to make a bit more sense. It's just not as special as the case in any way, shape, or form, with a clasp that feels a bit wobbly and thin when opened up all the way, but it balances this out with plenty of micro adjustments to help dial in the right fit. Again, very minor critique, all we're saying is that it's very average and just seems to touch misaligned with the overall attention to detail exhibited with the case. Using archetypal watches as his panoptic inspiration, Dan Henry continues to breathe new life into the watches that he designs. As a well-regarded watch collector, scholar, and now watchmaker himself, Henry offers up one of the best microbrand dive watches under $500 with the 1970 Automatic Diver, hours here in 44mm. At first glance, the 1970 is a clear amalgam of retro references. We're seeing a vintage IWC Aquatimer, we're seeing some Longines Legend Diver, throw in a little rarity with a Wittenauer Vintage Super Compressor, add some color, and hey, you'll come damn close to what Henry has offered up with the 1970. Interior bezels were a product of the late 60s and early 70s, when the scuba diving sport quickly gained steam fueled by figures like Jacques Cousteau. Watchmakers raced to make the most capable diver, and one method of doing so was to scrap the exterior bezel and instead build it into the interior of the case itself. So instead of the 1970 having one screw down crown, it has two. The topmost at the 2 o'clock actually controls the bi-directional rotation of the inner timing bezel, and the 4 o'clock controls the handset and the date at the 3. 44mm of 316L on the wrist, 50.5mm lug to lug, and a hefty 14.8mm thickness. Not totally unforgivable or at all surprising for a diver with an internal bezel, which does add a few millimeters of thickness to the case. But there does also exist a 40mm unit of the 1970 for anyone who's looking for smaller overall proportions. One having a far more compact 45.7mm lug to lug, but still just as thick. A mix of high polish and brushing graces the main case, and we like the added texture on the front sides of the crowns, that feel almost like the crisscross supports of an old brass diving helmet. Speaking of, the engraved case back rocks an octopus sporting just the helmet that we're speaking of. Check it out. Under a subtly curved sapphire, the dial packs in plenty of depth with its applied elements, most of which are covered in luminova, as is the chapter ring and the inverted triangle on the inner bezel. We do wish the numerals on the inner bezel came loomed up as well, but it doesn't much affect the functionality since the chapter ring has fixed numerals that glow plenty bright. Inside, Den Henry uses a very reliable and widely utilized Seiko NH35 that you'll have absolutely no issues getting service for if anything does happen during your time with the watch. The 200 meters of water resistance keeps everything within the case nicely protected, so feel free to bring the 1970 on light dives. We love that the 1970 comes with a period accurate Tropic style strap, one made popular by Swiss Venture Vulcan in the 1960s. This one is a 24mm unit to match the large proportions of the case, but the 40mm uses a smaller 22. The 44mm 1970 is a limited edition, peep the case back, but there's also a small chance Henry will do what he did with the 1972, and later release an unlimited run with a number of subtle design changes, so we'll see. The Tissot Seastar has a history dating back to the mid-1960s, as is the case with most divers from Swiss Heritage brands, and they looked markedly different than they do now. Today, we're discussing the Seastar 1036mm, in an effort to balance out the other, larger picks in our guide. The Seastar demonstrates that dive watches don't necessarily have to be large to function as purpose-built tools. With 36mm of 316L stainless steel, the Seastar 1000, in our opinion, packs in just as much legibility with its high-contrast black and white scheme as any of our other divers. Technically, because of its size, Tissot released the 36mm in 2022 as a unisex model within the Seastar catalog. But given the vintage craze and push towards smaller case sizes, the 36mm case is definitely a unicorn in the modern dive world, most of which only size down to around 38mm, and if they go any smaller, they're usually heavily inspired by design cues of the past or are straight up homages. Anyway, the Seastar 1000 feels markedly premium in hand for its sub $500 MSRP with a hefty full 316L stainless build, a unidirectional bezel, 
beautiful case finishing with the refreshing use of brushing on the sides of the case and lugs instead of on the top where we see a high polish instead, a simple screw down crown at the three protected by a small pair of guards, and a case bag sporting the Tissot Seahorse, which is a bit odd considering the watch isn't called the Tissot Seahorse. Now, Tissot isn't really well known for their divers the same way that Hamilton is more well known for their field watches, albeit both supply dive watches with decent specs and arguably pleasing designs. Under mineral glass, the dial is very sub-like with similar framed and loomed elements and a baton style handset with a seconds using a Tissot T counter near the center. The addition of a date on this 36 model is interesting given the dial's limited space, but it replaces the 6 marker so it doesn't in actuality cause too much density. Powering the diver is the EDA F05412, a Swiss quartz movement. EDA's a subsidiary of the Swatch Group, like Tissot, so no surprises here that the C-Star would use this movement. Quartz is a great option for a diver, especially under $500, where full mechanical movements can be unreliable in terms of practical, purpose-built use case underwater. We don't see many folks using the Sea Star for serious diving despite its 300 meters of water resistance, but if you do, the caliber will have your back and will do so without any fuss. The Three Link Stainless Bracelet is a markedly better unit than what we saw with the Kamasu Diver. Excellent finishing, a solid build, and an overall more robust push-button clasp with a safety clasp and three micro-adjustments for dialing in the right fit. We also love the double spring lug link, which actually makes it a convenient quick-release system. Other than purpose-built, life-saving digital dive watches with depth gauges and dive calculators and loads of other helpful features a pure mechanical unit never will, chances are you'll find plenty of divers topside or at depth rocking citizen. The low-cost durability is extremely appealing as a diver you can wear in and out of your gear and look great doing so in the process. One of Citizen's best sub-$500 offerings is the Promaster Dive Reference BN0167-50H part of Citizen's larger Promaster dive line, most of which fall well below $500. And by well below $500, we mean it. Our producer once procured one brand new Promaster from a Citizen outlet on sale for about $140. There are a number of aspects that make the Promaster dive a suitable, dependable, and attractive diving and everyday wear companion. The 200 meters of water resistance, the robust full stainless steel build, the chunky easy to operate unidirectional timing bezel, and insane amounts of loom. Citizen employs some of the brightest and longest lasting loom in the business. You'll often find yourself waking up in the middle of the night with the marker still glowing bright. 44 millimeters in diameter, 47 lug to lug, and about 11 and a half millimeters thick, so it wears far more compact than the dimensions would suggest. Our wearer has a wrist dimension just shy of 8 inches for context. Beneath a flat mineral crystal, the dial uses a subtle sunray texture extending to the steep chapter ring, encircling the large frame markers and the date offset at the fore. Not only do you get solid water resistance specs and durability, but a highly dependable EcoDrive E168 movement that can harness any available light source to top off its cell. The bracelet is a fairly standard affair and not the best we've seen around this price point, but it's solid, does the job, and even uses a Tudor-esque push-pull system to achieve a tailored fit. We didn't set up any qualifiers for this guide, in other words, best for this, best for that, but if we had done so, this would be our just get this pick for a handsome and well-designed diver, well under $500, taking in to account everything we just laid out. Most modern dive watches have followed the original mold, building their watches with conventionally tough, corrosion-resistant stainless steel. But hey, every material does have its drawbacks, and when Luminox first partnered with the Navy SEALs in the mid-1990s, the extreme demands of their profession called for something lighter, stealthier, and obviously insanely durable. As such, Luminox crafted the original Navy SEAL out of proprietary Carbonox, a non-metallic carbon powder composite material that's extremely lightweight. And we're talking 71 grams for the entire watch, as it's six times lighter than stainless steel and three times lighter than titanium. On the wrist, the highly tactical and fully blacked out Navy SEAL is 45 millimeters in diameter with a 14 millimeter thickness on the wrist with bright white embossed numerals on the 60 click unidirectional rotating bezel, as well as bright white Arabic numerals for the 12 and 24 hour track sitting underneath the hardened mineral crystal. At the 3, the screw down crown supports the 200 meters of water assistance rating of the main case and is coated in a silver color that matches the screw down case back. It does a really nice job of complementing the overall darkened color scheme without calling all too much attention to itself. In case you forgot, the rating is blind stamped on the left flank. Set within the handset and situated at the periphery along the chapter ring are tritium tubes that are rated for a 25 year constant glow. But don't expect the luminosity of regular loom. It's virtually impossible to accurately show on camera, but this glow can really only be utilized in extreme or totally darkened environments to be effective, or deep at depth.
What we like most is the thought put behind the entire watch. Focusing our attention now on the bracelet, the Carbonox continues with the three link unit that stays tethered with very convenient and far superior, in our opinion, screw post links instead of push style links, which also accent other silver tone pieces of the watch in a very cohesive way. A safety clasp and three micro adjustments on the partially stainless steel clasp allows for plenty of fine tuned adjustments and the whole experience has very, very little play anywhere. In other words, very precise machining tolerances. So with all that being said, if you're looking for a highly tactical dive watch, you can't go wrong with one vetted and originally designed, tested, and relied on by some of the world's most elite warriors. Yes, there are undeniably great sub $500 dive watches from heritage brands, but you can't dismiss micro brands, especially when your budget is limited. One of our favorite micro brand divers under $500 comes from Notice via the Sector Dive. The Los Angeles based duo behind Notice only started their venture in 2017, but have quickly built a standout catalog with a unique and appealing design language, and all with very attainable price points. They brand themselves as a watch research and design firm that invests heavily into R&D and rigorous testing of new and cutting edge manufacturing techniques. And based off the quality of the machining in hand, the tolerances are precise, there is beautiful attention to detail across the main case in terms of finishes, pattern, and shape, and the 7-link Beads of Rice style bracelet is stunning with two different levels of polish. 39mm of 316L with a 47mm lug to lug and a 12.5mm thickness, near perfect proportions for an everyday wear style diver. Check out the different finishes on the lugs, a few different directions of brushing and a strip of high polish, horizontal brushing for the case sides, beautifully rugged knurling on the screw down crown. Our version here sports the black DLC coated steel bezel with fine circular brushing, but you can also offer an equally unique uncoated unit that maintains black embossed details. For the price, we love that it's a 120 click unit. On the other hand, it's extremely tough to rotate, as one, it's pretty thin overall and hard to get a decent grip on, and two, you need a very high degree of force to do so. But honestly, we're not at all mad, since we'd much rather have a well-aligned, tough-feeling bezel than one that has discernible play or movement when not intended. Drilled lugs also add a touch of vintage charm, even though this watch definitely feels like a wholly modern creation, beads of rice style bracelet aside. Under a flat sapphire with a slight interior dome, the rich red fume dial houses thick-set Swiss Superluminova TC1X1 Arabic numerals and markers with simple dial text above the 6 and below the 12. These elements, as well as the handset sporting a lollipop seconds, glows a gorgeous shade of bright blue in the dark. Although the dial's background does have a rich red hue in bright sunlight, any other darker conditions render it in a dark maroon. Red tide, we assume, refers to the toxic algae blooms that often happen by way of changes in the tides, temperature shifts, or other environmental stresses. If you've ever seen these tides at the ocean, they're bright red in actuality, and we'd like to be able to see a bit more color on the watch's dial in the center in all lighted environments. But hey, very minor point. Powering the diver is a Seiko NH38 regulated by Notice themselves that provides about plus to minus 10 seconds of accuracy per day and about 41 hours of power reserve. Now, the Beads of Rice style bracelet is one of our favorite aspects of the watch. It's extremely well executed and was surprising as to just how good it felt on the wrist. The outer links use a fine brushing and both contrast and frame the five highly polished central links which are all held together with screw pins, a very welcome component here for easy adjustments. The clasp mirrors the shape, curves, and finishes of the lugs and sports three micro adjustments for dialing in the perfect fit. Absolutely beautiful diver, two thumbs up. We're going to continue our microbrand highlight with another one of our favorite watchmakers out of New York City courtesy of Laurier, who offer up the latest version 4 of their mid-century inspired Neptune Diver series, a new take on a lovely blend of classics from Omega, Blancpain, and Rolex. Hovering right around $500, Laurier offers up very similar watches to that of Baltic, another microbrand with excellent divers you should also look toward if you're a fan of the mid-century diving aesthetic. Our recommendation would be to look towards the Aquascape, which offers a palpably similar design and specs in the same ballpark. Anyway, the Neptune Series 4 builds upon the Series 3, shocker, and made a few subtle changes including a revamped acrylic bezel insert within the 120 click stainless steel bezel, slightly shortened lugs, thinner bracelet links, and repositioned lug holes, all based on user feedback. 39mm case width, 10.3mm thick with a 2.4mm domed crystal and about 46mm slug to lug of pure 316L stainless steel. 
We love the overall large proportions of the screw down crown. It's large in proportion to the main case, and that's a build characteristic of older divers that nowadays is becoming increasingly rare to see. Looking at the watch from the side, and you'll see the Neptune's highly domed Hesalite crystal, which only further adds to the period accuracy, and it renders the dial underneath with some interesting qualities when it's viewed off angle. The dial is packed with vintage charm, gold framing, thick bubbly indices applied with BGW9 Superluminova, an extremely classy gold set text above the 6 and under the 12. The very next thing you'll notice is the smooth sweep of the seconds made possible by the Miyota 90S5 automatic movement that sports a beat rate of 28800 BPH, something very hard to find at this price point. One observation, we did notice a fair bit of rotor noise, so if your hearing is particularly sensitive, this may not be the right choice. The redesigned bracelet is essentially just a thinner version of the Series 3, with slightly rounder chamfers and convenient screw post links, making it incredibly easy, combined with three micro-adjustments on the clasp, to dial in a solid fit. Absolutely beautiful watch. Now, onto our last sub-$500 diver pick. Part of Seiko's Prospex line, short for Professional Specifications, the Seiko Prospex SRPE99 Patty Edition, also known as the Seiko Turtle Patty Edition, is a purpose-built diver for the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, the world's leading organization for scuba training. The rounded cushion case shape is what prompted fans of the Seiko Prospex diver to name it the Turtle, as it takes on the shape of the aquatic reptile shell. At 45mm in diameter, with a 47.7mm lug-to-lug and a 13.4mm thickness, the Patty Edition builds off the framework of the classic Seiko Turtle, another truly fantastic diver under $1,000, with a full brushing across the top of the case, a beautiful blue dial decaled with the Patty logo, and the addition of a Pepsi-colored unidirectional timing vest. For anyone who's worn a Japanese diver and they have shared character traits, you'll find that most chunky divers actually wear smaller than the paper specs would have you believe. It's because of the stout lug to lug. Citizens the same way. The offset crown at the fore also does go a long way to lessen their perceived heft on the wrist, as Seiko builds it into the case shroud. As it's made for THE diving association, Seiko didn't skimp on the water resistance, offering a solid 200 meters of water resistance, which is fine for most light dives. The OG Turtle employs a jet black dial with white indices. Seiko swapped that and chose a bold ocean-esque blue with a decent amount of reflectivity for the patty edition. At the 3, above the crown, there's a bright white unframed day-date window and the slope chaptering on the periphery uses red accents instead of white. Obviously, one of the best aspects of any dive watch is the loom, and the Patty Edition has it in spades. Check it out. Inside, Seiko employs the in-house automatic 4R36. It's a very well-known and well-loved caliber for Seiko, with 41 hours of power and a beat rate of 21,600 BPH. Its predecessor, the 4R35, is one of the most widely used automatic calibers at this price tier, so you can expect to see it again if you're looking at other Seiko divers. Seiko doesn't always offer steel bracelets, but for the Patty Edition, you're in luck. For about $550, it's not anything fancy, but the three-link brush unit does the job and it looks great on the wrist. So all in all, we think we made a pretty solid case that finding a great diver under $500 is completely doable. Of course, you just need to know where to look and what exactly to look for. So remember, water resistance is paramount, of course. At least 200 meters for diving, a screw-down crown, a solid marine-grade stainless steel or similar material with solid corrosion resistance, and of course, a design that excites. So as always, check out our editorial guide as well, and make sure to drop us a link with your favorite diver picks under $500 in case we didn't showcase your favorite.